I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you for the second of my very short sort of sermonettes, lessonettes, on uh, some of the doctrines, basic doctrines of uh, the faith. The second one comes right after the last one, which had to do with the doctrine of Jesus Christ, who he is, what he's done. That was necessary to talk about first before I spoke on today's subject, which is uh, of the doctrines of the faith, the doctrine of salvation. I really wanted to start with that one, but you had to understand who Jesus is first and what he's done for us before you can know to be saved. So let's get started. What is salvation? We'll talk about what is salvation, how do we receive salvation. It's not a hard subject. Uh, Jesus Christ made it very simple. He's done all the work. He's done all the effort. We just need to believe. So, number one, what is salvation? Salvation is, number one, it is the new birth. It is a new birth. John chapter 3 and verse 1 tells us this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So the first thing we see is that salvation is a new birth. It is literally becoming inside a new creature. You are receiving a, the, the Spirit of God within you, and getting a new man in there. And at that point, we become sort of two people. We are still the old man, the old man of flesh, the old man that is geared towards sin, and but we are also the new man that came about at the new birth. The day that we were born again, we received the new birth, and we became a new man. And as we begin to live this new life for Christ, we are going to... Uh, want to fight that old man and his urges and desires to do whatever we want, whatever we desire, whatever our flesh wants, and live after the Spirit. And the more we live for the Spirit, the more we will weaken the flesh and the desires thereof. So first, it's a new birth. The Bible says that we are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Everything should become new. It is a new start. It's a new slate. In the eyes of the Lord, you've just been born. All of your sins are gone. Number two. So number one, it's a new birth. Number two, it is salvation from sin and the effects of sin. Continuing in here in John chapter 3, verse 14, and as this is the words of Jesus, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So number two, we are saved from the effects of sin. It says here in verse 18, He that believeth not is condemned. Before you are born again, before you know Christ as Savior, you are condemned to death. Not just physical death, because we'll all taste a physical death. That's an aspect of the old man. This old man body, and mine is especially an old man body, is one day going to die. It's going to perish. It's going to pass away. But the spirit is either going to dwell in hell, or it's going to live on in glory. One way or another. Uh, we, we need to believe in Christ. If we believe, we don't perish. If we do not believe, we perish. That means we go to hell, yes, a real hell, a literal hell, a place of fire, a place of torment, 
It sounds like crazy old weird stuff, but you know what? It's very true. If it wasn't true, there would have been no reason for Christ to die for us. But there is a real condemnation for those who are not in Christ. And it is my desire that whoever watches this, if you are not saved, that you would pay attention to that. Because I don't want anybody to say to die and go to hell. I can't think of anybody who I hate enough, who, who whose sins I hate enough that I want that person to go to hell. I would prefer that they got saved and became my brother. So number two, salvation is from is salvation from sin and from the effects of sin. Number three, it is an adoption into the family of God. Look at Galatians chapter four, the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 7 and it tells us this wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son now let's go back a couple of verses here I think we can go back to verse uh, uh, verse 4 uh, chapter 4 verse 4 but when the fullness of time was come God sent forth his son Jesus Christ made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that means to purchase them away from that, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And that word Abba, it is a very uh, personal word. It's kind of like Daddy where we can go to God and consider him our not just our, our God, not just our creator, but those are important, but we have a close relationship now where he is now our daddy. He's our father. We've been adopted by him into his family. Verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. And that's an amazing thing because now we are not just a son, but we are heirs alongside Christ. So Christ is our brother when we are born again. We are adopted into the family of God. Now we do not become like God or like Jesus, but we are adopted into the family when we receive that eternal life. So number three, it is adoption into the family of God. Number four, it is eternal it is eternal. We will not lose it. A lot of people want to scoff at the idea of what they say, once saved, always saved. But it's true. It doesn't give us license to do whatever we want. It doesn't say, hey, I'm saved. I'm going to go out and have a good time and forget everything, eat, drink, and be merry. No, that's not what it means. Now, granted, if we did do that, we still would not lose our salvation. But I like to think that most people who get truly saved, they don't really want to live that way. There's going to be a change. And, 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 and so it's not a license to do as we please. In fact, it is freedom to now follow God and be able to do as he says. John chapter 10, it is eternal. John chapter 10, the words of Jesus Christ tells this directly to us. John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. That means life never ending. And they shall never perish. Never perish. And that word perish generally has to do with eternal damnation. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now imagine this, Jesus takes hold of you, and he holds you in his hand, and he says, now nobody can pluck you out of my hand. Now let me ask you something, if you're in Jesus' hand, can you even pluck yourself out of his hand? Because he says, neither shall any man. Now that word man, of course, is a general term for any human being. So I ask you, are you greater than God? He says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Only when somebody becomes greater than God can he even pluck himself out of the hand of the Father, because he's greater than you. When you get greater than him, pluck away. But you're not going to be able to do it. God is greater than all. He puts you in his hand when you're saved, 
and you'll never be unsaved. Once you are born, you can't be unborn. So once you're born again, you cannot be unborn again. So number one, salvation is a new birth. Number two, it is uh, salvation from sin and the effects of sin, which is death. Number three, it is adoption. We are adopted into the family of God. And number four, it is a, of an eternal character. So now the question is, how do we receive salvation? How do we get it? What, what do we do with this? When, uh, when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost to all the Jews from all around the, 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 the different nations, and he preached to them, the Bible says that they, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said to them, men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, hopefully that's where you are now. Okay, you told me all these things of what salvation is, so what, what, what now? What do I do? How do I get salvation? Well, I'm going to tell you. Number one, we accept that we are a sinner condemned to death and to hell. Because before you can get saved, you've got to know that you're lost. Okay? If you don't realize you're lost, if you don't realize you're floundering and on your way to hell, there's no reason to go to Christ. So number one, you must know that you're lost. Look at John chapter 3. You're hearing the book of John already. John chapter 3, going right back to where we just read verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. If you are not believing in Christ already, if you've not accepted him as Savior, you already have a reservation in hell. But that reservation can be done away with. Because it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. So when you come to Christ for salvation, you will not be condemned. But you've got to understand first that you are lost. You are currently heading to hell. Romans chapter 3 Verse 23 says this, or verse 10, let's start there, Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Nobody is righteous in and of themselves before the Lord. Nobody, nobody is right before God. Verse 23, for all have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, died, sinned in her life. Because she was under that all, for all have sinned. The only one who never sinned is Jesus Christ himself. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means I've sinned. That means you've sinned. And I had to recognize my sinful nature and come to Christ and ask him for salvation. But I couldn't come to him to be saved until I accepted the fact and realized that I was dead and heading to hell. And if you're not saved, that's where you are. Now don't get offended and shut it off. Because that's the first step. Okay? Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. Okay? The wages of sin is death. What you earn from your sin, your rightful earnings, your wage, is death. Not just again physical death, but spiritual death. Death and hell. Because at this point, you're outside of Christ, and Christ is life. That was on my earlier video. Christ is life. Apart from Christ, there is no life. So, but, verse 23 also says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see, it's a gift. There's no work that needs to be done. It's a gift, but you've got to do something. It's not a work. But you still got to do something to get it. So number one, you've got to accept that you're a sinner. You're condemned to hell, condemned to death, and you have no hope but Christ. Number two, we receive salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. Ephesians chapter 2, right after 2 Corinthians, or I'm sorry, right after Galatians. Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 5, sorry, verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Okay, God is rich in mercy. He loves us. He's got a great love for us. Even when we were dead in sin, even when we were sinners, even when we were filthy before him, just as you are, just as I was, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved. That word quickened means made alive. So Christ wants to make you alive. 
Verse 6, And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to us word, uh, toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. <clears throat> so we are saved first by grace. We need to understand we have grace. God's grace is upon us. Grace just simply means our, his unearned, unmerited favor. He gives us favor for no other reason than because he loves us. We are his people. We are his creation. He made us. He loves us. He wants us to be saved. He wants to cleanse us of our sin. So he made a way for us through Jesus Christ. And it says we are saved by his grace through faith. We believe in that grace. We believe on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. When he died on the cross, he took our sins upon himself and he took our place. He paid the price. So the price has been paid for our sin. It's a price we can't pay ourselves, but he's already paid it. And all we have to do is in his grace believe on him and receive salvation. So number two, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, we receive salvation. But there's one final thing, and that is we must repent. Remember we talked about we accept that we're a sinner condemned to death. Well, we have to repent of that sin. We have to repent. And a lot of people will argue and say, no, no, repentance is a work. No, repentance is not a work. Repentance is an action of the heart. Okay? Acts chapter 26 will tell us that. And make it very clear that this is something that we must do. When Paul was preaching before King Agrippa, he said in verse 20, uh, chapter 26, verse 20, he said, uh, uh, we're, or verse 19, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Repentance means in your heart to turn from your sin and to turn to God. Repent just means to turn. It means to turn and go the other way. When we're lost, we're going our way. We're following after our desires, after our plans, after our goals, after our sins, after our flesh, after our lust. When we repent, when we understand that we're lost, that our way has taken us to hell, we repent, we turn in our hearts from the way that we're going and turn to Christ. That is repentance. So then we call upon him, having repented, and repentance is a continual work. It's something that we'll do throughout our life of, of see, understanding what is sin and ceasing from sin. There's an active aspect to repentance as well. But at salvation, we understand that we're sinners. We turn from our sin, turn to Christ, call upon him for salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no magical prayer words. There's no, there's no uh, a secret way of saying it. All we got to do is understand that we're lost because of our sin, that Christ died for us, paid the price for our sins, turn from our sins within our heart and turn to Christ and ask Him for salvation. And it's that simple. Salvation is a free gift. But know that if you get saved, he says here, do works, meet for repentance. Do works to show that you're repented. Live a new life. You're a new creature, born again in Christ. I encourage you, consider what I've talked about today. Look at the word. Be sure that I'm saying the right stuff. I don't expect you to have 100% faith in me. You don't know me. But trust God's word. The Lord wants to save you. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to make you his child. Jesus already did the work. You just need to believe and be saved. Then you need to get yourself baptized and into a good church. But that's for the next lesson. God bless you. Don't let what I've said fall upon the ground. 
bring it into your heart, act on it, come to Christ for salvation. You can be saved today. You can be a part of the greatest miracle that ever occurs, death to life through Christ.